Welcome to this update video. For those who watched the last one, I am back in my room. Uh, I've rearranged it a little bit and yeah, I thought in this video we'll run through the photos and videos that I've taken over the last uh, was nearly three months since I recorded the last video. So it gives a good amount of time. I can really show you the progression I've made and how things are going pretty well. Uh, I go off today for a three week physio course so I thought I'd make the video now and then I can update you on anything that changes after the course and slowly I'm getting back to training normally how I how I would like to you know that uh, as my normal form of training so we'll go into the photos and videos now so I'll go off camera and I'll go on my microphone and um, we'll talk about the kind of difficulties that I've had, um, any things that have surprised me. I'm going to be limited with advice that I give purely because, you know, I'm not a physiotherapist. Uh, I'm training as a nurse, so it's it's different. Um, but I can give that kind of viewpoint from that healthcare side, um, things I struggled with, things that. Yeah, kind of certain pieces of advice I, I feel like I can give, um, but I'm not going to go out and say this is exactly what you have to do, these are the steps, you know, the, this is a, the basic principle, because that's not, that's not, you know, <laughs> it's not the uh, qualification I'm going for, um, nor do I think that everyone's rehab is going to be the same. So I can show you what I did, and I can show you what worked for me, and the steps that I've taken, but that's no guarantee that it'll work for you. Uh, again, not a physiotherapist, not a personal trainer. Uh, I've just trained for you know over ten years in the gym. Um, just read up on it, on it a little bit, and I'm doing a nursing degree, which is not a physiotherapist's degree. So um, yeah, everything I say, take with a little pinch of salt. Um, but yeah, let's run into the last three months. Okay, so this is what my leg looked like last video. As you can see, the atrophy. Um, you can still see kind of the almost the bruising in the shin uh, left leg, uh, obviously the one with the scars uh, scars still look, look quite bright um, but yeah the, the main focal point on all of these photos is going to be the, the muscle mass and how that has slowly progressed back so this was a this was an early recording of the calf raises I was doing. You can see I'm just assisting it on the my right arm is just assisting with the balance, and from this angle you can uh, you can notice the atrophy in the lower leg as well uh, in the calves. So yeah, this was a massive staple in the rehab process. Um, calves are not to be forgotten. It's quite easy to work your quads. You know, when you go to the gym, a lot of the exercises that you're doing for your legs will work your quads. It's important not to forget about your calves. And uh, <laughs> you can see just how easy it is on my non operated leg. So, this is the second set of, of that. Um, shorter, shorter set. Back when I was doing these, I'm pretty sure I was doing them until failure. Uh, each set I was just pushing until failure. And then what I did was I matched it with my right leg. So the rehab leg I was doing as many reps as I could, and then my normal healthy leg was just matching so I was never working one leg more than the other if you were just looking at it numbers wise. So as you can see here there's a little bit of muscle gain. Uh, I'll compare it to the the first one. So there's about two weeks I believe between these photos. Let me just double check. Yeah about two weeks between these photos and slowly starting to gain the shape back. You can see that the 
the muscle shape is coming back. Not necessarily the mass, because I don't think the mass, you know, the mass probably hasn't been affected that much at this point. You can still see the swelling in the knee capsule area in the joint, um, in the joint capsule. So yeah, that mean two weeks. It's not not looking too bad. So this was introduced to me by the physio. Uh, so it's uh, electronic muscular stimulation, and it is painful, really painful. You can see that it's jolting, and then and then kind of really holding a contraction, and. Uh, yeah, I got this, this machine was the physios, and then I bought my own, so I could continue it on weekends, or, you know, I didn't have to go to the gym to do it, and the main help that I experienced with this machine was at the, one of the key points when the brace comes off, or even after surgery in general, is knee extension, so getting your leg nice and straight, fully activating your quad and you know, kind of teaching your brain how to contract all that muscle again um, and I was struggling with getting my leg fully straight uh, the top of my quads just they just weren't working and there was nothing, I couldn't do anything in the gym, I couldn't kind of do any movements that would get the top of my quads to activate so these, this machine, and doing this a couple of times a day, you know, two to three times a day, I was I was managing. It it almost forced my leg to straighten, and it's it's about as painful as you can imagine, um, and especially when it got to when I got to the higher intensities, and it was forcing my leg straight where I couldn't do it. It was quite painful, but I was assured that I'm using it correctly and that my knee is supposed to straighten. It's not as though I'm going to force it into, you know, I'm not going to force it into a, a dangerous position. Um, I'm just allowing the muscles to fully contract. And it did really help moving on to, uh, you know, allowing my leg to fully straighten. And by doing that alongside, the gym work it did really help with getting that knee nice and straight and having the control over that contraction so they really it, it did really help um, after your knee can fully straighten so after I was able to get that full extension and controlled extension with all of my quads uh, all of my quad contracting as it should it's the machine isn't as necessary then you can use it still um, I used it a few times for kind of recovery to keep the blood flow moving but in terms of for rehab purposes as soon as you can get that leg straight it's it's not as useful so these exercises uh, fuck me right starting the step up video now so this exercise was a staple of my rehab I could do most of the exercises quite well uh, my strength was coming back really you know really nicely but I was kind of struggling with the balance and going downstairs was quite awkward for me so these you know this exercise and doing these consistently every time I went to the gym was really helpful um, yeah I <laughs> I st when did I stop doing these I still do them sometimes but I stopped doing them every day when I moved to proper box squats and kind of single leg leg press that's when I stopped using these um, but up until then which was quite recent, um, these were key. Um, yeah, these are amazing. So a little bit of detail that I haven't actually mentioned was I wasn't allowed to bend my knee past 90 degrees until the 12-week mark. So what that took me up to, that was three months. 
Um, so that was the twelfth kind of to thirteenth of thirteenth well, of July. So that's when I could bend my or around the thirteenth of July. That's when I could bend my knee again, kind of past ninety degrees and push it. So I couldn't leg press up until then. So you know, up until July, I was doing these as my main form of kind of pushing my body away from the foot kind of exercise. Now it's been replaced with squats and leg press and Bulgarian split squats, but these are, you know, these were key for me. So this photo is two weeks after the previous one, and I think you can start to see that I'm getting that mass back. You can still see that the knee is quite swollen, um, but you can see the calf shape coming back quite well and the quad really, you know, starting to get that mass back. Still, you know, baby steps, nothing too crazy. And then the video is just me showing the movement. You can still see it you can still see it's quite shaky. It's still quite a lot of effort, but I'm able to get nice and straight with that leg. Um, yeah, it's 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 weird. Every everything is you really do have to focus on all the movements. I couldn't just, you know, moving that leg ever since, you know, not using it for six weeks and not weight bearing. I really had to focus on everything, every movement with that leg. You know, up until recently, I, I still, you know, if I'm turning or if I, um, you, know, le you, know, you know, bending down to pick something up, I really have to focus on that leg. Um, luckily I'm at a stage now where kind of walking and doing day to day stuff is back to normal but you know in this stage this is this is a month after the last video I recorded so still early days and this was two months ago from now so um, yeah it was a lot of hard work I would, I would say that this part as soon as you can walk it's almost as though normal life can resume, and that's not the case. Um, it's a bit, it's a bit grindy. You have to be in the gym. You have to be working, you know, doing the exercises, getting the reps in, building that muscle back. To me, that's part of the fun. I know that not everyone will enjoy that, but that is the reality of this kind of rehab process. So this photo is from the 5th of July so again about another two weeks after I think most of these photos are you know, two to three weeks between so yeah you can really see the ship come back you if anything at this point you'd almost think that they're around the same mass you can still see the difference in shape and you can still see that the knees quite the knees swelling is kind of coming down you can see the the medial, the inside of the knee is starting to show its shape, whereas in the last one it was still quite swollen. Um, but it's looking okay. So yeah, 5th of July, about two weeks from the one on the left that you can see. And I think at this point, you could almost get away with uh, <laughs> saying that, you know, back to normal, normal size, now it's about, you know, getting that strength back. So 18th of July, so I was cleared to bend my, I think I was cleared to bend my knee. I'll have a look, the 12 week mark was exactly 12 weeks from surgery, so so the 22nd of June was when I was able to bend my knee past 90 degrees. So this is a about, you know, this is close to a month after that. Um, working weight here is around 120, 125. And to be honest, I was being quite conservative. You can see by how well the weight is moving, this isn't too challenging for me. Uh, thankfully, I put a lot of work in before surgery, so I was able to, that, that, did and research suggests that you know outcomes are better when you 
put the prehab in. So I was lifting, you know, I was lifting PBs before surgery with one ACL. And then it has made the strength coming back, it's made it fairly linear. I don't think I've really had to step down the weight at any point. I have been fairly conservative though. You know, at this point I probably could have thrown another four, um, another 40 kilograms on and, and lifted it, but you know, it's not about pushing it, it's about getting the muscle moving, getting everything acclimatized back to training. So this was a few days after the deadlift video. So the weight I've got here is 80 kilograms. So at this point I was back to doing box squats and you know, the weight was not, again, <laughs> not too much of a challenge, but it wasn't about that. So my mentality when I'm lifting these weights, when I'm you know, doing it for rehab purposes is I know my right leg, the one that didn't have surgery, is going to be absolutely fine. So I focus on that left leg, that kind of mind-muscle connection. I am focusing on making sure that my knees track over the toes, making sure that everything is stable and that I'm working both legs in a balanced manner so that the bar stays nice and straight um, and my hips stay even as well. Luckily, I think everything worked and I think I've been pretty successful in my rehab. So this is 100 kilograms. Um, Again, I was being pretty conservative. Uh, I, th I felt like I could have lifted a lot more, but it's not the point really. So I think I do this for eight. Uh, I'm not, I don't remember to be honest. But yeah, moving well. I'm not kind of posturing up too much in that bottom position. I'm holding that active squat position and yeah, making it look like a good squat. You can rest in that bottom position at the you know early stages of getting into box squats, but that box is there to kind of indicate your bottom position, not to actually rest on. So, yeah, little tip for that exercise. But uh, yeah, the, the weight you know this weight was moving up, moving well pretty early on in my return to weights. So I recorded this video on the leg extension machine. I am pretty sure I have five kilograms on the machine. It's not a lot of weight. And yeah, I'm just slow and controlled. It's not difficult, you know, the weight is not difficult, but being controlled with it is a challenge. And in previous training, uh, when I was trying to get strong knees years and years ago, this machine really helped me so I was excited to get back on this and yeah you can see as well with, with this that the, the mass is coming back nicely the shape's coming back and uh, yeah this exercise and this machine really helped me with my rehab so this is what my legs looked like at the end of July so this was about three weeks ago from where we are now and this was after a nice another nice lower body session. You can see that you can the, the vastus medialis, so the the kind of inside quad muscle that you see that looks like it attaches to the inside of the knee. Um, it's still not quite as big as the right leg, uh, right leg being the one without the scars. Um, and you can see it's still not quite as wide at the top, but the shape is there, the mass is coming back and you know, progress is being made the calves still you know maybe not as big but that shape is coming back and at this point the strength was looking pretty good um, yeah at this point I was very happy when I took this photo um, it was quite you know it really shows when you go from this one to the you know looking at the previous one it really shows the progress that I've made so back to leg extension machine this was on the day that I took that photo, um, nice and controlled. I think I'd gone up to 10 kilograms or you know close to there, and you know, challenging myself a little bit. You can see the knee shake near the top, and uh, that was quite normal at the beginning. Um, it's 
relieved that a little bit now, which is good. But you know, that that kind of knee shake is not to be expected. I mean, I expected it. I don't know if it's actually to be expected. Um, but it definitely that that shake eased off as I got deeper into the sets. So this was at my local gym back in Gloucester. I went home for I went home for a few days, so I signed up to the gym. This is 120 kilograms safety bars there, and uh, you can see that I'm not really supporting myself with the bench. I'm just that bench is indicating that's my lower position. And this weight moved really well. I did four sets of 12. You know, this was uh, this was a bit of this was that kind of moment where I realised, oh, okay, I I can start moving weights that I used to. This is still the heaviest box squat I've done, even up until this point. Um, I'm now trying to focus more, as you'll see in videos to come, focus more on the mobility and getting that kind of deeper squat back and on this physio course I'll have that discussion with the physios and doctors on you know what's best to focus on um, but yeah this this set really kind of solidified the confidence in that leg because that's another massive thing about this whole process is the mental health and the optimism and you know your confidence on things and it is really important just to keep that kind of positive mindset you will have days where it feels like absolute shit and you feel like you, know, you feel like shit um, and you genuinely you just have to keep going forward you just keep have to you know have to keep moving and keep going to the gym and any kind of movement and blood flow in that area will be positive um, and as I said you'll get to a moment like this where you'll hit you know sets you used to be doing or weights that you thought would be heavy move really smoothly and it'll be kind of a turning point in confidence and uh, yeah, this this set definitely gave me confidence moving forward. So this was not an exercise that I spoke to the physios about or anything. I kind of made this up on my own. So I tried to do normal squats at the beginning of this session, and my bottom position was horrendous. So I kind of kind of constructed this exercise. So. I found a way to make a box around where my femurs, my thighs, are parallel with the floor. And I would go down, aim for about five seconds, touch the box, rest a little bit, you know, kind of check my breathing, and then hold about an inch off that box for five seconds and then come up. And that, again, I don't know if it actually did anything physically but it gave me that kind of mental confidence to go to that position and then after the after you know I think the day after this I was able to do this exercise with tens on either side and it felt a lot easier um, so sometimes doing that is quite interesting slowing down the movement and focusing on certain positions of the exercise that you're doing Making sure that everything's controlled, obviously. But this was, you know, this was interesting. This was an interesting set for me. I'm hoping to get back to proper squats pretty soon. So, this video was just kind of proof that I could body weight leg press. So, single leg leg press is a metric used in a lot of rehab programs to indicate that you are ready to move on to kind of other exercises. So I believe, uh, don't quote me, I believe that a 1.25% body weight is kind of a, a metric used to return to running. So um, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do body weight. So I've chucked on 80 kilograms, which is pretty much my body weight. And I managed uh, five reps. This was the second set I ever did, I think. Uh, you know, easy, easy five reps. Um, since then, I have done 120 kilograms for one, and that was maybe an RPE eight and a half. So I, I still think I could probably go heavier, but I was happy with uh, 
120 kilograms being 1.5 times body weight. So this was just to show that I'm getting that mobility back. Doing normal squats is still quite difficult, but I don't know. I'm not sure why it's difficult. So I, you know, adding that counterweight. It's only a five kilogram plate. It's not too much of a counterweight, but it's just something, and it really allowed me, you know, to get my, you know, get that ass to grass kind of feeling. And as you can see, it's not actually. You know, I'm not too shaky in that position. The knee looks pretty stable. The surgical knee is the one closest to the camera, so the one that points to the camera. And it's looking quite good. I'm pretty happy with this video. Hoping to build on this kind of movement pattern. Okay, so this is the last photo. This was taken last night, and yeah, it was taken after a 30 minute cycle. But you can really notice the difference in mass and the you know the difference in the legs is is kind of minimal at this point. That vastus medialis, the one you know that inside quad muscle is still it's a little bit of difference, um, but it's not actually you know it's not looking too bad in 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 personal opinion it's not looking too bad. I'm very happy with the progress that I've made in the three months since making that video, the last video, and hopefully this physio course can just push me above and beyond, you know, push me to levels that, you know, back to, back to where I was before. So that has been the last three months. Uh, yeah, we're. I think we're looking quite good. Um, pretty happy with the progress that I've managed to make, and hopefully, just going to get better, bigger, and stronger. Um, next big step for me is going to be running, and I'm not a massive fan of running, but I think that's going to be a massive milestone because I haven't I haven't done any running. Well, since the injury, so nearly a year ago, so that's going to be that's going to be fun. I want to get back to you know that kind of five k time that I was running. Um, I think my PB is twenty three and a half minutes. I would love to get under twenty two minutes. Um, might have to sacrifice a little bit of muscle mass for that, but you know we'll see how that goes. So physio course starts today. Uh, well, physio course starts tomorrow. I've got my initial assessment today. Um, excited for that and yeah, thank you very much for watching if you've watched all three videos you've really seen that journey um, it's not been easy you know that kind of retrospective look is you know you're only in the brace for six weeks it's not that long oh you only can't bend your knee for 12 weeks you know that's not that long really but in the moment it really does feel like a long time so when you're there you know, if you're watching this video um, while you've just, you know, just after you've had the surgery, you kind of just have to stick with it. You, you don't really have a choice at that point, so you have to stick to, you know, non-weight bearing. You have to, you know, use, get used to the crutches. When you come off of the brace, and in my case, I still couldn't bend my knee, but I could start walking. That's when you really have to. You know, you have to get it in the gym. You really do. Um, it's it is difficult, and I'm I'm lucky in that regard that I have been. My career has enabled me to really focus on my rehab, and it's been actively encouraged that I get back to you know best physical fitness that I can. Um, so I, I'm very lucky. Not everyone has the opportunity that I have had with this um, just to close the video I'll show you my current training routine okay so what we're looking at is my training plan from the 14th of July uh, up until now um, so I basically made this training program 
um, showed it to the physio, and the physio was like, "Yeah, that's that's fine." So yeah, so it's it's a mi- it's almost a mix of it's kind of getting everything in there in that week um, that you can. So you've got the strength, the hypertrophy, cardio, and even when you, your resting days, you're still trying to do something. Um, I've had very few days where I've done nothing. You know, it's got here, so it's got six sections. Um, and I'm not going to lie, I haven't <laughs> stuck to this you know, as strictly as I could have done. Um, there have been times where I've gone you know, five days without lifting weights, but on those days off I've still managed to do you know, maybe some yoga, I've still managed to stretch out, I've managed to go for a long walk, um, managed to do some body weight exercises. <coughs> so, yeah, this, this was... This is the goal. This is kind of like the best way that I could have trained. Um, very similar days with regards to strength and, and hypertrophy. Um, just the str- the sets are different. So with the, the strength days and the and with the hypertrophy days, you you I don't count warm up sets. You know you you do two to three to four warm-up sets however many you need to do but then your you know active working sets are going to be you're going to do four to six working sets of four to six reps um it's almost unlikely that i'm going to be doing you know six set, six sets of six or four sets of four i'm most likely going to be doing either you know kind of split it so four sets of six or five sets of five or six sets of four that's my mentality when going towards strength you know other people's may vary um but that's my goal when i'm gonna (coughs) sorry when i'm going for strength that's my kind of mindset when i go when i look at the working sets and reps with hypertrophy again you're doing four sets of eight to twelve um working around 60 80 percent no 60 to 70 percent of your max um, bear in mind your max will be very different after surgery um, you know my my uh, box squat was up to I did 200 kilograms for 3 reps before surgery 200 kilograms is not what I consider my max when I'm training for rehab purposes that's why you know for hypertrophy I was doing 100 kilograms um, and even that was, you know, quite heavy. That's fifty percent of my max. So, and that that was fairly advanced, um, kind of a fairly advanced weight for the stage of rehab I was in. So, be conservative. Maybe find your max. I think that's what I did. Oh yeah, you can see completely. I'm not even looking at it. Pyramid set to find your working weight. So start really low and work your way up until you find that kind of sticking point and then that's your that's your working weight or you know that's around there is your working weight and um, with the hypertrophy focus on the control of the muscle you know, hypertrophy is all about that time under tension you know working that muscle as hard as you can really focus on the contraction of the muscles and you know that's what that's what you've got to do in the rehab process. Cardio, cycling and rowing. I haven't done much rowing to be honest. It's been mainly cycling, and you do have to push yourself because, for me personally, cycling has always been a muscle exercise. It hasn't. I've never really used it as a cardio. It's never really got my heart rate going that much. So I've had to really push myself to to do that. Um, and it has helped. It has it has worked. Make sure you rest. You know that's when you get stronger. Rest is really important. Um, alongside that, make sure you sleep well during your rehab recovery and rehab process. That's one thing I have always struggled with. Um, bit of a night owl. So you know it's uh, <laughs> that's one my, that's one limitation that I have personally. But really try and get good sleep 
uh, get into a good routine and you know smash this out when it comes to training um, I was lucky with how things worked for me it was fairly linear it's not going to be linear for everyone so if you have to you know put the weights down for one one session one week you know any kind of period of time that's okay your focus is on the longevity of your joints so you know don't push yourself because you, you you know you you've got that risk of re-injury um especially in the early phases of rehab so just stick with it and you'll be absolutely fine so that's how I've been training since I believe the 14th of July I think that's that's when it started so it's been a pretty intense month um, but that kind of training regimen has you know really really helped with with that progression of rehab for those of you who are watching who have to go through the rehab yourself don't be discouraged if you know certain things aren't happening as quickly um, or don't be worried if things are happening you know if you're able to do things quicker than I have been um, as I said at the beginning everyone's process is different everyone progresses at different rates you know the, your condition before the surgery affects your you know, your progress after so just stick with whatever your physio says keep that leg moving and uh, yeah you've you've got this don't if I can do it any of you can do it so good luck to those out there I uh, hope you've enjoyed the video I will make an update after the physio course and if you are interested I can get back into recording my regular training kind of I could do weekly highlights of anything that I do any impressive lifts that I do or just kind of my goals for the week uh, if that's something that you're interested in you know leave a like and a comment and I can definitely definitely get that organized but yeah thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed and for those going through it as I said if I can do it you have no problem doing it.